so there's this little game that I've been playing recently. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called like Mega Kill or Ultra Blood or something. Wait, maybe. Ultra Kill is peak FPS, and I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that. Every single video about this game on the internet is just full glazing, like the community just doesn't shut up. And this video is going to be no different. It's not a brave statement to say that the shooter games genre has been pretty stale in the past couple of years. And with all the half-baked products that keep being released that put all of their budgets into keeping a player addicted rather than actually programming good game design, like why am I paying a hundred bucks for a game just to pay hundreds more on microtransactions to access 75% of the content? But pfft, why am I even talking about games like this? This ain't a multiplayer shooter. Ultra Kill is a movement shooter. Think less Rainbow Six Siege and more Doom Eternal. Less 54 year old English teacher and more 16 year old with loose shorts and a Red Bull in his hand. You see this bit is relevant because Ultra Kill is cool. Basically, Ultra Kill is THE movement shooter. Get out of here Doom, the new kids in town. Mankind is dead, blood is fuel, and hell is full. It's got all the bells and whistles you could ever need. Fast speed, fast killing, really fast enemies, and geez, I'm starting to sound like a glazing Andy, but this game is actually that good. Um, Ultra Kill is genre defining. V6v1. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let's not ever enter that part of the fandom again. But, but seriously, for me, Ultra Kill is now the new gold standard for movement shooter games. And with the amount of Ultra Kill clones popping up that are bangers in their own right, and all the other great games that New Blood Interactive are publishing, it's great to see more indie movement shooters being brought into the spotlight. But what makes Ultra Kill just so fantastic? When designing a movement shooter, I reckon it's pretty important to get the shooting down, don't you think? Well thankfully this is Ultra Kill's strongest point. What do you think this is? A gun? Good job. If you left click with this pistol, it shoots. Super simple. And right clicking allows you to charge a piercing laser that can hit multiple enemies at once. But now bring in one of its other variants, and this one has the same simple left click. But now you can throw a coin in the air. Shooting this directly aims for critical spots on enemies, which is pretty cool, right? But with this little coin mechanic, you can punch it, chain it, and even combining this with other weapons allows you to do some insane things and do crazy tricks. Now if I wanted to explain all the cool janky weapon tech in this game, we'd be here for hours. And although I'd love to, this isn't a tips and tricks video. But I will cover each of the six weapons and what they do. First, we got the fists, alright? We got the normal one that can punch and parry enemy projectiles. One that explodes. And as if an exploding fist wasn't cool enough, they decide to add a freaking grapple hook, which is my personal favorite. Moving on, we got the pistol, which we got the two I mentioned previously, along with its third variant that lets you spin it like we're in Red Dead Redemption before blasting a ricocheting shot. The pistol also has an alternate style that changes it to a revolver, and this just changes out its fire rate for damage. Moving on to the shotgun, which shoots a simple buckshot, but using its right click fires out a little bomb. Its second variant lets you pump it a couple of times to fire more pellets, but don't pump it too much or you might not be allowed to enter an airport again. And the third variant puts a chainsaw on the tip like a bayonet and you can fire this out like a repeating boomerang. And the alternate style for the shotgun is a little jackhammer which is pretty cool. Now for the nail gun which fires nails of course, but its right click can set it a homing rod that pulls in its bullets which is Pretty fun to play with. Its second variant just shoots nails again, but faster. And the third variant can shoot a little taser.
and the alternate style for the nail gun shoots literal saws and using this with the homing rod now makes a saw trap which is one of my favorite things to use in the game. Fourth, we got the rail cannon which just shoots a simple piercing shot that does a whole heap of damage. Its second variant shoots out a drill that attaches to your enemies and drains them of blood. And the railgun's third variant fires a freaking nuke. And lastly, we have the rocket launcher which fires the blast that knocks your enemies away. But its right click freezes your missiles which give you time to jump on it and rocket ride with full control. Its second variant fires a massive freaking cannonball and the last variant sprays oil everywhere that can be set on fire to ignite enemies. And all of these weapons can be mixed and matched to do some super cool tech. Some of my favorites include parrying your own shotgun bullets to make them explode on impact, hitting your coins with your railgun to do some crazy damage, and really anything with a marksman pistol is just super fun to mess around with. But I'll be honest, I'm actually not that good at this game. Ah, <sighs> yeah, yeah, the cat's out of the bag. I'm no insane speedrunner or technical genius like this. Nah, my fingers just can't move that fast. But thankfully, this game just ain't about moving and shooting. There is so much in this game, from its lore, to its secrets, to a dating sim. There is just so many hours of replayable content in this game. Firstly, the secret levels. Every layer has their own secret level and you unlock them by completing certain puzzles in the levels. And these are just completely different games that take you out of the adrenaline pumping action that you would expect and gives you a little bit of time to relax. Except for Zero S. Um, yeah, we'll uh, move on. One S is pretty cool, it's like a whole bunch of little maze games. It reminds me a lot of this game I played a few years ago called The Looker. And yeah, it's a pretty fun little minigame. 2S is the uh, aforementioned dating sim, and is really a huge reason why most of the community thirsts over the main protagonist. Yeah, um, not, not much to say about this one. 4S is just Crash Bandicoot, and I'm not gonna lie, this level's pretty hard. I used to play the fuck out of Crash Bandicoot when I was younger, so this is a crazy throwback. 5S is my personal favorite, we, we gotta have the fishing minigame, and let's be real, it ain't a good game unless there's a fishing minigame. And finally, the last one we have so far is 7S, which makes you kill a bunch of enemies to cover the walls in blood and guts, and then forces you to clean it up like it's Power Wash Simulator. And honestly, hats off to Hikita for this one. The craziest part about all of these secret levels is just how amazingly polished these games are. All the main levels are super well designed and include so many secrets for world building and lore. And it really feels like no stone was left unturned. And even these secret levels, which would have been last priority, still include so many secrets and they literally feel like a whole separate game inside of Ultra Kill. Also, the fact that all of these levels thematically relate to each layer they are a part of just... It's, it's perfect. If we're going to mention the secret levels, we absolutely cannot miss the main levels. As mentioned previously, the design is almost perfect, and there are so many scenes in this game that are just so cinematic. Playing through these levels, and especially the ones later in the game, literally feel like a Michael Bay movie in some of these sections. These little interactions in between all of the action really set a tone that I would never expect from the funny little shooting game. The unique layout, scenery, and colors from each layer really sets them apart from the rest and makes them instantly recognizable, and are some of the most memorable levels from a game I've played. The Truman Show-esque background from the Limbo layer, or the dystopian city landscape from Lust, or even the artistic and clean atmosphere of Violence, these layers are just so incredibly well designed and themed. The music too, holy shit the music from this game is spectacular. Now I've been mentioning layers throughout this video and that's because the levels of Ultracle follow the nine circles of hell from Dante's Inferno and this relates directly to the interesting lore of Ultracle which there is a lot of so I'm not even going to try to open up that box. But the fact that this game holds so much fun along with the fact that it isn't even finished yet 
There's still the last six levels to be added, the last secret level, and the final arm variant, and probably a whole lot more to be concluded. So all up, other than me getting to glaze about one of my favourite movement shooters, what was the point of this video? I don't know, buy Ultra Kill I guess. Okay, glad I finished up that video. I can finally get back to playing Trapang 2.